Stop wasting your money. For most EV drivers, the low running cost is one of their main reasons for switching to EVs. Yet on our travels, making videos at locations across the country, we see shocking, horrifying examples of everyday EV drivers simply throwing money away down the drain. We're talking today about those EV drivers who knowingly and willingly increase their costs above and beyond what they used to pay when they drove petrol. This is Dave Takes It On. I'm Dave and I will reveal just how appalling this problem is and how a simple switch will stop it instantly. One thing driving petrol cars for decades has taught us has been the shocking cost of petrol. In the early days, we were stuck with a total monopoly. The big oil giants, they had the market well and truly sewn up. Names like Shell, BP, Esso were all that we had and price variations between the brands was well, pretty non-existent. Yeah, we got gimmicks, we got green shield stamps. Yeah, look that one up. Uh, dinky model cars, if you collected vouchers from your favorite brand. And most of us can remember they put a tiger in your tank and you got a free furry tiger's tail you're supposed to hang from the petrol filler cap. But actual price savings, yeah, nowhere to be seen. And then Asda broke that monopoly. They had the audacity to install petrol and diesel pumps in their supermarket car parks and they used to buy their petrol from exactly the same oil refineries that Big Oil used. To shatter the price monopoly, this move enabled the supermarkets to sell that petrol at whatever price they chose, and many chose to sell at a loss to get people into their stores where they did make a very nice profit. It's exactly like advertising, where you spend money in order to generate more money and profits. And it worked! And in time, all the other supermarkets have followed suit. There are very few, if any, large supermarkets that do not now sell petrol. And in return, we saw an almost instant response from the oil giants. They slashed their prices. Not down to those super low supermarket prices, but very much closer. Today, supermarkets sell typically 133, 135, oil giants of 136 to 138. This is competition in action. That's what competition does. It lowers prices for everyone. Well, almost everyone. At exactly the other end of the scale, the first of the motorways in the UK to add petrol and diesel pumps was just a few years earlier, and they chose the opposite route. You see, if you needed to stop and fill up while on the motorway, they could charge you higher prices. They had a captive market. In addition, they did have higher costs. Staff could not even get there unless they had a car. And services like food restocking, fuel restocking, that involved a trip along the motorway, getting on at one junction, driving to the services, then getting back on the motorway to the next junction to get... And this raised costs to the motorway services, who had no profitable store selling profitable products sufficient to be able to offset that loss. So they set higher prices. And this model has continued for over half a century totally unchanged and unchanging, despite just about everything else having changed all around them. Supermarkets still sell petrol at very close to cost, or sometimes below. You must surely have had one of those 5p per litre off the price of fuel vouchers if you spend £50 before next Friday. And motorway services still sell by far the dearest fuel in the country. According to the RAC Fuel Watch, today's price is £1.3701 in the supermarket, £1.59.23 at motorway services. 22.2 pence dearer for your petrol. And that is why most sensible drivers now top up locally and they don't go to the local motorway services. Going there specifically to fill up is crazy and just a waste of money. Well, locally, drivers have the choice of supermarkets who use exactly the same petrol but add only the cheap additives, while the oil giants spend huge sums on those additives, and there's a deer. But they only represent less than 1% of the fuel, so they can only justify one or three pence per litre on the price. Well, EV drivers are faced with massive change, way beyond anything they've encountered before. They have new cars, they have totally new technology. We've never before had regenerative braking or preheating the car from an app without running the engine. Got new controls, new data on the massive displays, load of new safety features, and above all else, a totally new fuel. 
No more daily or weekly trips down to the nearest petrol station that's been there for many decades. Now they have to contend with charging their battery with electricity, and the choice is simply overwhelming initially to many of them. Well, there are now about 45,000 public charger locations offering over 120,000 connectors. That's more than there are petrol pumps in the UK. They also have to deal with multiple different plugs to connect to the car socket, and that might involve using different cables. And a jewel in the crown is they might never have to drive to a public EV charging station ever again. There are more than one million home chargers, ranging from a simple three pin 13 amp socket right the way up to a 50 kilowatt DC home charger that is more powerful than many of the public ones you meet out on the road. And these home ones are being added to at the rate of about 300,000 a year. EV drivers have an absolutely fantastic choice of where they can charge the cars. As for prices, it is doubly confusing because most CPOs, CPO by the way, that's a network that offers public charging. And they charge exactly the same price at a motorway services as at your local corner store. In addition, the price bracket with EV public charging stuns the mind of many into total inaction. Near you will be prices that range from around 20 pence right up to nearly a pound a unit. And that's ignoring the totally free charges on offer. Yeah, you can get totally free public charging in most parts of the UK. And yes, there is an absolutely massive price difference on offer. Just how much difference that makes to charging your battery from empty to full at some popular CPOs will be revealed shortly. And that should or will stun you. At the very least, it should wake you up. But the overwhelming message that most EV drivers have not yet learned is that it doesn't matter where you get your electricity from, it is always absolutely identical. Whether it's from your own 13 amp socket or roof solar panels or your local EV public charging station or a massive EV charging hub or a motorway services, it is always identical. The same electricity has no additives and it comes from exactly the same source every single time, the national grid. And that is why I'm completely baffled, perplexed, bemused, myriad of other adjectives when I talk to an EV driver. It, well, I'm not going to reveal the location uh, to avoid embarrassment, but this person was charging their car at a charger that was priced at 84 pence, when just a few miles away there is one priced at 56 pence. 28 pence a unit cheaper. Or another driver who was charging at 79p, Two miles wide, there's another one priced at 55p. That's a 24 pence difference. And the one that has me completely stunned is when I see, and film by the way, an EV driver charging at one brand priced at 89p, when actually 100 feet away, literally on the other side of the same car park, there is a different brand priced at 33p. Same car park. Please help me understand. If I stop a petrol car driver today and ask them why they're filling up at a petrol station or supermarket and they haven't gone to nearby motorway services, they laugh in my face. Only an idiot would fill up at a motorway services for emergencies. That, by the way, is 22.2 pence per litre dearer. But if I ask an EV driver why they're charging using one brand where it's priced at 89p and not the nearby other brand priced at 56p, less than a mile away, it's a 35 pence difference. They explain, oh, this one's more convenient, or I like this brand because I never have a connection problem with it, or, well, I've got the app and it's really easy to use. Now, all of those are true in many cases. One might be more convenient or reliable or easy to use. Another might have better facilities or the correct brand of fast coffee. But the price difference can be more than 35 pence per unit. So let's have a look at the units because EVs don't use gallons or litres. They confuse matters by using kilowatts, kilowatt hours. I'm now going to hopefully enlighten some newer EV drivers, maybe offer a surprise or two for seasoned veterans. Well, electricity is measured in watts for power. Your EV motor might be 150 kilowatts, that's 150,000 watts. Your lawnmower might be 500 watts, your kettle's around 3 kilowatts. Low energy lamp might be just 15 watts. So by the way, a kilowatt is just 1,000 watts. A kilowatt hour is a measure of quantity or capacity, so one kilowatt hour is the total amount of electricity you will use, it's a quantity, if you turn on one kilowatt light in your home for exactly one hour, or you use your 500 watt lawnmower for two hours, 
That'd be a nice big lawn. Equally, one kilowatt hour can also be used to show capacity. This battery can store or hold one kilowatt hour, meaning it can supply one kilowatt hour, kilowatt hour of electricity for exactly one hour before running out. Or run your 500 watt lawnmower for two hours or a 10 watt smartphone charger. Well, you get the point. Your EV will have a battery of a fixed size. You can't change it, just like you can't change the size of a fuel tank. That size is a capacity and shown in kilowatt hours, such as my Renault 5 that I'll use in this illustration, uh, has a 52 kilowatt hour battery. Doesn't matter how slow or fast you fill it, doesn't matter where you fill it, nor if the electricity is AC or DC. When it's full, it will always hold 52 kilowatt hours. So if my battery is totally empty, by the way, never totally flatten your EV battery. This is purely hypothetical. I can fill it with 52 kilowatt hours of electricity. I could choose to go to a CPO that's priced at 89p. That's going to cost me £46.28. Alternatively, I could choose to go to a CPO that's priced at 40p. Yeah, I'm sure you see the big picture. At 40p, I'll only spend £20.80 to fill my battery. So where should I go to fill my battery? Now, it's not a trick question because I regularly see some CPOs that do charge 89p having queues at busy times. Do you see my problem? Now, if I'm lucky enough or use a bit of planning, I can find an EV charger that's priced as low as 23p and there is one very close to where I live. That would cost me £11.96 to fill the battery. So once again, where should I fill my battery? Oh, by the way, common myth is that you need to charge your EV every single day to absolutely full. No, not even remotely accurate. Ignoring technical stuff like battery chemistry and how often to what level, um, an EV is just like a petrol car. You might on average fill it just once a week. That's exactly why all cars have fuel tanks or batteries. You fill it up once, then you drive around for a few days or a few weeks until it needs topping up again. So for most EV drivers, whether or not they charge at home, they will fill up once or so every week. That is what you got used to until recently while you were driving petrol cars. So we're going back to that single question. Why do people charge and even queue up at a CPO that's priced at 89p? I don't have an answer, by the way. To me, that's far worse than filling up at the, with petrol at the motorway services. There, you're only paying 22.2 pence per litre over the odds, and petrol car drivers would never drive there out of choice just to charge. With EV charging, you could be paying 30, 40 or 50 pence per unit and more over the odds. It's a genuine question. Now, I know I'm going to get loads of comments from my usual EV haters stating, oh, well, where I live, this is a remote farmhouse, it's miles from anywhere, there is only one charger anywhere near within range, and that's priced at 89p, so I have to use it. Uh, which they don't actually, because being EV haters, they don't have a car anyhow. Uh, but yeah, that might apply to a very tiny number of genuine people. But how did they manage with a local petrol station? Surely that's as far away as well. Is that not many miles away and how do they fill up the petrol car? By the way, this just to prove it's a totally spurious fear-mongering myth because anyone who did live in that remote farmhouse, they definitely can charge using a home charger, even just a three-pin plug, so their EV will always be totally full every time they need it. So, wherever you can charge, does it not make sense to pay as little as possible for each charging session? Would you rather have a massive spare money available at the end of each month or hand it to an overpriced CPO or oil giant? But to put it into better perspective, I'll respond to a comment I received recently from David White, 1056, who asked, can I publish a table which compares the price per kilowatt hour for the electricity from a CPO with the equivalent price per litre for petrol at the local supermarket? Now, I did exactly this on a recent monthly pricing guide. You'll be able to find that one at the end. And it seems to have gone down rather well. But Rather than produce a huge table for all the CPO prices, let me explain how it is so quick and easy to work out your own figures for each CPO. Everyone can do it instantly in their heads. Most petrol cars average around 40 miles per gallon. Now, if yours is wildly different, use your own figure, but while most can do a lot more on a good clear run at a low but constant speed, maybe around about 50 mile an hour, they'll do much worse in stop-start stop motoring in the daily commute. Now, an average car will, according to the RAC, pay £6.23 a gallon, based on £1.37, today's price, 
and there are 4.546 litres per imperial gallon. So the baseline for a 40 mile per gallon petrol car is a cost of £6.23. Most modern EVs now will achieve around four miles per kilowatt hour. Now, in confirmation of that, I show some, I'll show some recent photos of my Renault 5 doing exactly that, even now in the winter, and that includes motorway mileage. To do 40 mile in my Renault 5, I will need 10 kilowatt hours of electricity. So the fuel ratio is a very simple 10 to one. I need to buy 10 units of EV fuel for every one unit of petrol fuel to drive 40 miles. So just take the price per kilowatt of a particular brand, say GridServe's 89p, multiplied by 10. It's that simple. Therefore, charging a GridServe at 89p is equivalent to paying £8.90 a gallon or £1.96 a litre. Whoa! That really brings it home. £1.96 a litre is so much worse than the actual price being charged for a litre of petrol at a motorway services. Even in Svall's nighttime discounted rate 60p, equivalent to £6 a gallon, one thirty two a litre. Small saving, not huge, but switch to Arnold Clark chargers with a flat rate of 55p, that's £5.50 a gallon or one twenty one a litre. That's a decent saving. Now, while that is a really good saving, petrol car drivers would travel miles to get to that sort of price. EV drivers can do far better. We're only just warming up. If you live in Glasgow, visit First Bus's Caledonia Terminal where the price is 39p. That's £3.90 a gallon or 86 pence a litre. Or Leighton Buzzard and AW Energy, also priced at 39p. So a quick question for all you petrol heads. If a petrol station in your city centre offered petrol at 86 pence a litre, Litre, how long would you be prepared to queue? Because queue you would. Or another more telling question, how likely are you to find a petrol station anywhere in the UK ever selling petrol at 86 pence per litre every single day? Tesla drivers already do. Off-peak Tesla superchargers priced around 23p, that's £2.30 a gallon, 50 pence a litre. Now, that on a petrol forecourt would attract a few queues, but Tesla drivers get that every single day, and they have done for many years. My very first ever public charging supercharging session six years ago was at this very price. That is very cheap motoring using public chargers. Now, to throw two massive big spanners into the works, first, if you can charge at home, then do so, where the unit price is 7p, making 70 pence a gallon, or 15 pence per litre equivalent. But the cherry on top? Well, if you own, for example, and it's not the only one, an, an existing Nissan Leaf or Aria, or shortly their new Leaf and Micra, you can get totally free charging at most Nissan dealerships. You can even book it in advance to make sure the charge is not being used by someone else who also wants to drive around completely free of charge. I bet your local Shell or Esso garage has never offered that. And that's the whole purpose of this video. Wake up and smell the money you are pouring into the pockets of CPOs who are out there to exploit the unaware. They will happily take your money. They will never tell you that you can charge much cheaper elsewhere, often just a few miles or even metres away. Think of your pocket, not theirs. It might be convenient to just head to the nearest public charger because, well, it's so close or it sells your favourite brand of coffee. But now that you've discovered just how expensive they actually are, I ask you, will you now do a little bit of research and find somewhere cheaper? I sincerely hope so, because my final message is really simple. Competition drove the price of petrol right down low with the supermarkets. Competition can drive the overall price of UK EV public charging down really low also. Just stop using the overpriced extortion and head for the cheaper options in your area. In time, <clears throat> they will get the message and they will drop their prices, making all EV public charging prices permanently low for all. I'm Dave.